to you and everybody in our community. This is Christy Whitman with the Quantum Success Show. And as you can see, I have a very beautiful, gorgeous friend next to me. This is Angela McElhenney, and she has been a personal trainer for over 20 years. And about around four years ago, she started doing competitive um, bodybuilding or more bikini competitions, and she's just killing it. She you wouldn't guess it. She is 52 years old. And um, she is ranked as a not only a certified personal trainer, but she is ranked in the National Physique Committee and Bikini um, Competitor. And she's just amazing, soulful woman. And what I, why I'm having Angela on the show is because she's really about women's empowerment. And I went through my own journey um, probably about four years ago now where um, I started to gain weight and I didn't, you know, I wasn't doing anything different than what I did when I created my ideal body, in which I created the Creating Ideal Body course. And all of a sudden I just started gaining weight. And, I, and no matter, you know, I was working out five days a week, I was eating well. And so I went and got my hormones checked and found out that I, my hormones, my thyroid, everything was whacked. And the, com the communication and the advice that I got from the physicians was, well, that just happens to women when they get older. And I went, no, that doesn't feel good for me. That's not going to work for me. I'm not going to let that be a belief that, oh, well, I'm a woman that's in my late 40s and now everything, you know, I'm supposed to be heavy and out of shape. That didn't work for me. And so once we make a decision to either go somewhere or not go somewhere, I didn't want to buy into that belief. I became diligent in fixing my hormones. And after I actually stabilized my hormones, the weight wasn't coming off. And so I got to meet Angela. And Angela really hammered at home for me that especially women, you know, in later in our age group, um, we need to be doing weights because I was working out five days a week. I was doing cardio. I was doing Pilates. I was doing, uh, you know, bar classes and they were great workouts, but they weren't changing my body. And so Angela got me back into working out in the gym and I have lost 14 pounds um, since that time of first even talking to Angela. So um, I'm grateful that I didn't buy into the belief that as I get older, I, you know, that's the way it is kind of thing. And that I had guidance when I needed it to get me and start leading me on the direction. So Angela, I am so excited to have you on the show. Oh, Christy, thank you for having me. I'm so honored. You're just amazing. And thank you for being, uh, let me be a part of your journey. And it's just so true. You're a perfect example. Um, obviously you're successful. Obviously you take care of yourself. And then to just not accept the answers that, oh, I'm sorry, you're aging. And we've just kind of been told that this is how we're going to age. We're going to get this spare tire and we're going to just have to accept the fact that we're now eating, you know, 1200, sometimes a thousand calories and yet we're still gaining weight. It's just, it's ridiculous. And like you've touched upon, you know, my main philosophy is muscle. And it's, I call my company a Mac muscle company because I want to reinforce and also rechange the image of a muscle bound woman. I think it's just so important to understand that that's a foundation. It is not a choice. It is a foundation for us. As we age, we lose muscle and the ramifications and the consequences of those, that loss increases our inflammation, increases our fat. And then like you said, it then changes our hormones. And yes. that's just talked about and trying to find a doctor that does that. Not that you're not out there doctors. I'm just saying it's harder and harder to find. Yes. And I really want to be, um, my husband will say, you know, that we are like, you know, kind of, I'm on the frontier. I want to be a different image of a 50 year old woman, a 60 year old woman. And I want to be able to show that it's, it's possible and we're not killing ourselves. We're not in there seven days. We're, we're putting in the hours to put in some, some muscle, but then we're fueling it with good food and enjoying our lives. So thank Absolutely. you so much for having me. I appreciate it. I, yeah, I appreciate you too. So you were a personal trainer and then all of a sudden something clicked for you and you wanted to go into competition. So what changed for you or what shifted to get you your, your focus at such, you know, since you've been doing it for so long and to see like you have, you know, you're like on in your Instagram, for example, you have images of you of where you were as a personal trainer and then you were at the same weight, but your body was so much leaner and more muscular. So, so what shifted for you? Well, and, and this is where I think my age shows. We have been told such better, no better word than crap for so many years and I bought into it. I really felt I wasn't doing enough cardio. And so 
as an instructor, I, you know, and as a personal trainer, I really upped my cardio. I was teaching many classes, loving that, but I was working out, you know, every day, sometimes twice a day doing cardio and eating what I deemed by, you know, society to be healthy. And um, when my daughter went to college and I went through a divorce, um, it's kind of like what you talked about. You know, you start looking at these transformations in your life and what did I want to do? For me, being a personal trainer, I also wanted to show the transformation that I wanted to live up to what I, I preached. And as I started studying more and more, um, it just became clear that I wasn't lifting enough muscle. And the only way I need to do it, I love a goal. I love having a carrot to work for. And so it was like a bucket list item. Let me go ahead and do a competition. And my first competition was at, was at age 49. I trained when I was 48, but I'd actually just turned 49 before I went on stage. And it was such a great goal. And then I got to see such like-minded women. They were warm. They were wonderful. And I got introduced into this world. Um, I love it because I did not think I could change in my late 40s. I knew I could maintain, but my belief systems of what I had studied as a trainer up to that point really limited me. And sometimes, like you preach a lot, a lot, is that we have to sometimes break those barriers and those limitations that we put on ourselves. And that was just a perfect example. When I got on that stage, I felt like I was, you know, jumping out of a plane. And what a great experience to just yeah. challenge yourself and see what am I capable of. And I'm too old to be here. I'm too old to be here is what I heard in my voice. And I'm not. Once I saw that I could do that, I now wanted to be the best. I didn't want to just place. I placed 13th. And that's still awesome for my first time. And there were, you know, women that had rocked it. But I wanted to be the best. And so that year, I just became a student again and really listened to the bodybuilders before me. And, um, and I really started becoming friends with a lot of women who beat me. And I love that, the camaraderie and women helping each other. And it just showed me that's what I really wanted to do. And that next year, I went to, to nationals. And again, lucky 13, I got 13. But I had seen my age group and the top five, and I knew what was possible. So the next year after that, I fought really hard and got third, which is huge in the nation. And it was wow. just a way to show I could do it. And now at 52, I look better than I did at 47. I look better than I did at 40. And I, then I wanted to just have every woman know that this is possible. You don't have to be a, a competitor, but you can change your dynamics, your composition, just like you have. It's not about weight. I know that you're smaller than the 14 pounds you've lost because the muscle composition has changed in you. And that's what we really want. You know, we want that freedom to still wear those jeans, but also have the health and not have the hormone issues. Oh, my body is totally different. And, you know, it's like even, even when now I'm at a plateau my, and I'm still weight, doing weight training and everything, my body is still changing. And I'm also, um, you know, one of the things I talk about is vice freedom and having vices, you know, eating too much sugar, drinking too much coffee, drinking too much wine, doing all the things that, you know, really try to take us away from our pain. So we do them and then we judge ourselves, beat ourselves up and we continue to, you know, increase the shame tank inside of us because we know that we have this goal yet we keep eating the ice cream or we keep eating, you know, the sugary coffee drinks or whatever it is to actually get us out of the moment because we're in pain, we're not feeling good. So for me, you know, that was part of my journey as well, is really look at the places where I'm feeling like I'm needing this vice. And as I've released, you know, eating sugar, and as I've I haven't drank any wine in months, you know, I haven't had any alcohol in months, I actually went on a vacation to Europe, and I was telling Frederick, I have no desire to have a glass of wine on this like fabulous vacation, we're in Italy, we're in, you know, and it's just for me, it's like, I just don't want to put that in my body. Now that's for me, there's no judgment for anybody else. But each each decision that I'm making and each time I'm letting go of those things to try to take me out of any type of pain or discomfort or disconnection. I don't know if you can hear it. I have a, um, um, uh, uh, what are those woodpecker? <laughs> it's working on my house right now. Anyways, sorry, I'm doing an interview. Do you mind? It's like Scottsdale too. And so <laughs> I'm like, there's a woodpecker. Who could blame him? It's so funny. Um, so yeah, when, when I made those decisions for myself, it's like I can even see my, my body composition changing. But the start of it was really making that decision that because I'm now 48, you know, and back then was 47, 46, um, making that decision that even though I'm entering into my late 40s, that I am not going to let that be an excuse or any of the other societal things that we hear. And almost, you know, the... I'm literally going to knock back. Hang on. <laughs> Scare it away. So, sorry. <laughs> um, 
you know, it, it, and it's so important for us as women, especially for men too, any place we're limiting ourselves to be able to say, well, that, you know, that really is just a limitation. It's not true. It's just a belief. And to be able to really let that go and shift like you did. And, um, you know, I think it's just really important to have these conversations to, and be an example for women because that's what you are, Angela, is that you really are a role model to so many other women because it's like you're just getting started and you're 52. That's right. Yeah. That's, and, and, I, and it's so true that, you know, all the lifestyle things and all the obstacles, every woman is different. And I think part of the things that I really wanted to do as a personal trainer, and I do a lot of online, is work with a woman because they're each individual. You know, each woman has a different obstacle. Each different has a different story they've written about themselves. I know the foundations are always going to be muscle and I believe more protein. Those are my foundations. But everything else is obstacles that, that you know, are unique to whether they have young children, whether they have um, limitations. Maybe they have more fat loss than, than they, they want to, you know, to deal with. Or like you said, food addictions and different things. And we all do. We all have something. There's no one that's living a perfect life. Right. It's just how can you find your motivation? And I do believe there's an, es- an element of discipline. And I think it's just not preached as much. And I believe discipline brings rewards. You know, we just, if, whether it's a relationship, whether it's a body goal um, or even a job, you know, once we put in the, the consistency, we get the benefits. And with our bodies, we just have so much, and especially food, we have so much instant gratification that we can get from a piece of chocolate, a glass of wine, whatever it is. And I understand that because I love sweets. But um, I wanted a lifestyle that that's going to happen sometimes. You know, we're all going to have celebrations. We're all going to have times that get emotional. And we've all been through rough times. But I wanted something that when that happened, it didn't derail everything. And by having the extra muscle, you're able to kind of deal with body fat a little bit different because you have an underlying base. And that burns more. And I then as that, you know, those rewards start coming, of course, and you get more and more motivated, as you know. Now yeah. it's that, that piece of cake just doesn't look as good because you're like, you know, I feel really great. Not that there's times you're not going to do that, but the discipline comes more and more. So it is kind of a, um, a snowball effect. And I've always told everybody the snowball either goes, you know, either way you're going. Once you stop and you have a couple drinks or you have a couple things and pretty, oh, I don't feel like going to the gym, pretty well, that snowball starts rolling downhill. Well, yeah. it also can be the opposite way. Once you get up, you go to the gym, you start eating right, you start feeling a little better. Hey, I want to feel that way again today. And that snowball starts going. So that takes discipline. Motivation is kind of just, um, it's, it's not always the key. Of course, we all want to be motivated. And I'm all for finding a carrot, whether it's the wedding you have to go to or the reunion or for me, a competition. But, you know, daily discipline is really the key. You know, it is. It's the consistency. And something that when we were working together and I wrote about it in my new book, Quantum Success, Um, I don't know if you knew this, is that I have one of those moments because my life is like a vacation, you know, and my, I was programmed as a kid. I would watch my mom that when we would go on our vacations, my mom would be on a diet. She'd start her diet every Monday, every Friday she was off of it. She'd let herself go, you know, like on the weekend, it was like free time. Right. And then she'd start back on Monday with that diet. And you know, for me, it was like I had to get over that and, and the whole thing of on again, off again of a diet, because that's where when I let go of that, I created my ideal body because it was a lifestyle. It wasn't something that I just did during the week. It was consistent, like you're saying. But as I created my ideal life and my ideal career and was able to travel with my family, you know, I'd find myself in San Diego and there'd be like this ice cream shop that had, you know, in, in the, the bookends of it, you know, chocolate chip cookies, and it'd be like a chocolate chip cookie ice cream sandwich. Yeah. And I mean, you, you had said to me, Christy, as long as you are um, thinking that when you're on vacation, that's a time to cheat, that's a time to let yourself go, you're never going to meet your goals. And it was true because I'd be like, oh, I'm on vacation with my family, even though I was not on a vacation, right? Um, I was just in a daily part of my, my life and would go out several times a night to really nice restaurants, several times a week to really nice restaurants and, you know, have wine and, you know, have dessert and, and that sort of thing. And that actually was the reason for my weight creeping up because in my mind, I'm on vacation. So therefore it's free time. And when you said that to me, something viscerally shifted in me. And I, like I said, I wrote it because in the book, I talk about writing, writing out your goals and having those goals, having those things at the end of the goal, like what's the reward, right? 
But at the same time, it's like, what are the things that are going to also prevent you from hitting those goals? And that was a big thing that really prevented me from hitting my weight goals or my fitness goals or my body composition goals is because I couldn't just go and look at, at my life, even though it feels like a vacation. I can't right. equal food and cheating and eating whatever I want with vacation. Right. It, it really comes down to, you know, we'll talk about special occasions and vacations, but if every Tuesday is a special occasion, it's just not going to work. And we just, in our society, we've kind of got that everything is around food, every celebration, every, and there's ways that, you know, both you and I, because we travel, we have to, and um, we're on the road all the time. So we have to make choices at restaurants. We have to go and buy our gallons of waters and our, our shakes and stuff that we have with us because otherwise, like you said, we're on the road all the time. And I love working with women that travel because there is so many great options, but it's just not talked about. It's easier when you're at home and you can meal prep. And even I'm, I need to put more of that because I think it really would help a lot of people. We all live in a society where everything is about, let's go out to eat, let's get together. Um, my daughters, I'm blessed enough to have them here in San Diego with me. And now instead of us going to dinner, we'll go for a walk and coffee. Let's go grab some coffee and let's go walk around the city. We live in this great place. So, you know, John and I are just so excited that we're able to, to pass this on to them. And they're both, you know, active. And of course, they're in their 20s. They don't have to try so hard, but they're beautiful. <laughs> and we want this to be a lifestyle for them, you know. Absolutely. So yeah. And so there's, there's a couple of things that we talked about is really, and this is for all of you that are watching is really examine your own beliefs and, you know, think about the ways you think about diet exercise, about even your own beliefs about getting older, about, you know, you achieving the kind of body that you want to really live into and have and feel good in. And, you know, what is it that you, what are your body goals? I mean, maybe you don't even have any cause you kind of given up cause it feels like it's too hard, but what would feel good? You know, what, what, what kind of, um, what do you want to look and feel like? And, and that's the first place to start. And then from there, look at what are the beliefs that I have? Oh, I'm too old to get in shape. No, you're not. If you believe that, yes, you are. But if you really challenge that, I mean, hopefully Angela is a, a really good example to show that, I mean, you know, we showed during the editing process, we showed some of these pictures of, of her on stage and, you know, how fit she is. Maybe you don't want to look like Angela, but maybe you want to feel better in your body. Maybe you want to, you know, gain more muscle mass. Whatever your goal is, um, you can do that, but you have to believe that you're able to do that. And the other thing that Angela was sharing is being consistent. Because, you know, I talk about on this show all the time about raising your vibration to manifest what you want, um, whether it's, you know, through meditation or, you know, what, whatever the tool is to raise your vibration, to feel better, to come back into your joy. That also is a consistent practice. You don't go to the gym once and lift weights and transform your body. You don't meditate once to find inner peace and then have inner peace forevermore. It's not a diploma that you went to college, you got, and now forever that thing is yours. It's something we have to do consistently, week by week, towards our goals. And the third thing that I want everybody to focus on, Angela loves to do competitions. Um, we have a mutual friend that also just did a competition. Um, and she's Angela's client. For me, no desire to do a competition. I have another friend who's a coach, Carrie. I've actually had her on the show before, Carrie and Brian. And yeah. um, Carrie does uh, photo shoots. So she has her time where she's called cutting. And she takes, I think, um, 12 weeks to, to do her cutting where she's like really pristine with her food and her workouts and everything. And at the end of it, she'll go and do a really fun photo shoot. You know, right. so that's her carrot right? So find out what your carrot is. What is your goal? And how can you reward yourself at the end of it? You might love to do a competition. You might love to go get pictures taken. You might want to go on a vacation. You might want to buy a, you know, a really nice purse. You might want to go, you know, on a shopping spree with your new body, whatever that is for you. You also need to reward yourself and do it in a way that's not about rewarding yourself with food. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> can I get it? And I really want to emphasize to women and what <clears throat> on my platform is, is that some kind of muscle is needed. If you're just doing something that is cardiovascular, it's great for your heart. And I'm not saying that that's not important, but you are not, you may shrink a little in size, but you're not going to change your body composition. And we want to think about five to 10 years down the road. What do you want to be? How do you want to look? How do you want your health to be? And we, you know, we all know that muscle helps bones. And so that's going to help our structure and be able to not break a hip as we get older. 
or fall, but also it's going to keep the body mass at a good composition for eating, for hormone levels. We're just not speaking enough of how the correlation between muscle and hormones are related. And is and when you have muscle mass, there's a different physiological thing happening in your body than when you don't, even if you're skinny. So please girls go out there and if you just push ups, sit ups, squats, do basics at first, but then start getting in the gym. I'm telling you that transforms your body and you can have it to be any kind of tone. And I put those in quotations that you want because tone equals having more muscle mass and less body fat, whatever degree you want that to be. And of course we all want to be tone. So, and as far as like being afraid of being too bulky, there are a few that do, but my philosophy has always been, I'm never going to be skinny firm again. So I'd rather have thighs that are a little bit bigger and rocking and tight than I would have them to be saggy. And her, op- her size are like this. Let's, I yeah. mean, come on. <laughs> but the opposite happened. I, the more I lifted, the tighter my body became, the tighter my legs became. And it was just, it reinforced even to me again, because I had been brainwashed for so long. That if you lift, if you lift weights, you're going to get bulky, and it's just not true. Yeah. You're only going to get tighter and stronger, and you feel amazing. So, agree. I'm, I'm perfect my proof question. of it. I used to be afraid of getting bulky too because I've got really muscly thighs, and I can really squat and really do lunges and all that kind of stuff. I could work my legs, and they get really pumped. But the more I do it, the tighter they get, and the smaller they get, and the you know, so and the more defined they get. So. It's so true, especially women that are getting up in age. It's not like in our 20s where you're going to like bulk up, which is kind of a, you know, some, some, there's a short, a very small percentage of women that do, but it also has to do with what you eat and, you know, all that goes in with it too. So um, don't be afraid to at least start some type of weight workout. And if you need to, um, Angela is available. She actually does training and does training programs for people online and um, can work with you and help you online. I mean, she lives in San Diego. I live in Arizona and I was able to really kick, kick, kick it into gear as far as what I wanted to do by working with her. Um, so don't use the myth that you have to have someone in the gym with you. Now, if you've never done weights before and you want someone to help you, there are many gyms that obviously have personal trainers. Angela can even help you, um, you know, do a weight training program and then have the trainer show you what to do. So there's many different options, but don't let anything be an excuse for why you can't get in the shape, the best shape of your life, no matter what age you are. I don't care if you're in your sixties, go for it. You know? Exactly. Yeah. So any last words, Angela, you're amazing. I appreciate you being here. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm honored. Um, and thank you for being such a great client. You know, I'm just so proud of you and, um, thanks for spreading my, my name about it. I just appreciate it. And I'm just hoping out there that we touch someone and we help them, you know, get their ideal body or feel better. I want every woman to be the best version of themselves and to feel sexy again. That's the goal. So thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so much. So please let us know what you're taking away from this. There are so many nuggets, um, so much information. And, you know, what did it rattle up in you? Maybe it just rattled something up in you. Maybe it, it really rattled a desire. Maybe it woke up, woke something up in you that's been dormant and, you know, really birthing a new desire in you. And if that's the case, that's so exciting. So leave us a comment. Let me know how this has impacted you and make it a great week, everybody. Thanks so much. Thanks, Angela. Thank you.